in at the Galileo stage. We are joined here by Pablo Garcia and Jose Antonio, and they're going to give you a talk on robot, robot DIY. Round of applause, please, for Pablo Garcia and Jose Antonio. Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for the introduction, Aaron. So, uh, I am Pablo, and my colleague is Jose, and we are going to give uh, this talk. Uh, it's about an introduction to robotics and the panorama in, in Spain, basically. So this is a bit the, the outline of the talk. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, the introdu introduction to ARDE, uh, robotics in general also, robotics DIY in particular, and how easy it is for all of you to get started into robotics. Okay, and then uh, my colleague will continue with the second part of the presentation. So, you know Jose, you know me, so there is only this guy missing. His name is Sardorito, and he's the charismatic ma uh, mascot of our association. Okay, so now uh, we can continue. Uh, it's about time to explain what ARDE means. In, Sp in Spanish, it stands for Spanish Association for Robotics and Domotics. So, Okay, great. So these are the kinds of things that we do as an association. We organize and participate in events, uh, competitions, and also teaching the basic of robotics. This was um, an educational fair for kids uh, that took place uh, a couple of years ago. So as you can see, uh, the kids get to play with the robots, and at the same time, we were explaining, explaining some uh, fundamentals. Uh, so that they get started in the robotics. Uh, for instance, this uh, wall was a labyrinth. So uh, the kids uh, enter the labyrinth with uh, blindfolded, with, with their eyes covered. And in order to escape from the labyrinth, uh, we provide them a device, which is uh, pretty much like a lantern, a regular lantern. Okay, but it's, instead of emitting light, it, it works with it ultrasounds. Okay, so uh, they have to orientate themselves inside the labyrinth in order to escape. So it's uh, very easy games to uh, get in contact with uh, the world of uh, robotics. So after this experience, after spending one, one whole week in the, in the fair, uh, this is what, the, what I learned. A couple of conclusions from the people who were visiting us. First one is that the robotics is cool, okay? Normally, uh, we have uh, electronics, which is kind of the dark side. Uh, we have to deal with uh, black and ugly chips. And somehow, uh, robotics makes this much more appealing for everybody. So we have uh, animated devices that attract uh, our attention. So it's good, but uh, however, on the other hand, we had uh, this other type of comments. It's so cool, but I am not a genius. So I don't know why, but everybody thinks that uh, you have to be an Einstein or a special guy to uh, get in touch with robotics. So let me show you that uh, this is not the case. The rules uh, have changed, maybe, uh, long time back, you know, uh, the material and the equipment required to start uh, your way in robotics, it was really expensive, fragile, and even dangerous to handle. But now it's not uh, like that anymore. And uh, the price has dropped a lot, and also the tools are much uh, different from what we had at the beginning. So nowadays you can get a whole pack like this one with uh, hundreds of sensors, and with this uh, it will be under 50 bucks, 50 pounds if you want, and it will provide you enough fun for at least one year, or even more if you have uh, imagination to create more complicated uh, uh, projects. On the other hand, uh, tools, uh, the way we program nowadays, there are special frameworks and interfaces that uh, facilitate a lot the task. So as you can see here in this example, the commands that you send to a robot to control are uh, very close to the natural way we speak, to our natural language. It's even easier, so you can uh, switch to this kind of uh, graphical interface. So just by clicking and moving boxes, you specify what you want your robot to do. From this point, you just uh, click a button, and the computer will automatically convert these diagrams into a machine code that will be uh, downloaded and executed into the robot. So it looks pretty easy, right? Uh, what do I need to get started then? So. My recommendation are these uh, three things, which are the basics, this determination to start, determination to start, and determination to start. Okay, so really, if you look at the uh, panorama, it's all out there. Nowadays, with uh, an internet connection, you can get everything. You don't even need to move from your sofa, okay? You are sitting at your desk, 
So you can order online all the components. In one week, probably, if they come from Hong Kong, they will arrive to your place. So you open the box. And then, again, you go to the internet. And in places like Wikipedia and some wikis that you have in many uh, robotics uh, websites, you have uh, trillions of manuals that will get you started in uh, robotics. I mean, whatever doubt you have or question, it, it has been already uh, answered in the forums, probably. So if it's that easy, what keeps uh, so many people away from robotics? Uh, I think uh, it's an interesting thing that uh, it's like I call it the, the invisible wall. OK, so I imagine like there is something behind, that, uh, before it, that uh, prevents people from entering the world of uh, robotics. So you can think uh, of the same thing, the same situation uh, when you are trying, for instance, to lose some weight. Okay, and you want to go to the gym, for instance. We all know how to lose weight, right? So basically, the idea is you have to eat less and exercise more. And we all know uh, how to do push-ups and pull-ups. So you need nothing special for that. However, uh, when you have a nice pair of sneakers or you go to the uh, gym with your friends, uh, it all gets much more easy, right, somehow. So this is basically uh, why people, one of the reasons why people are paying for personal coaches. Okay, it makes your life easier. So this is what we try to do with Arde. Okay, so we try to remove this wall and help you get into uh, robotics. So let me uh, go back to the previous slide and add uh, this new component here, which would be the, the fourth one, is to have the right companion by your side. Because uh, when you are on your own, you know, if you try to go to the gym or you try to learn new languages, it's really difficult, right? Because uh, at this point where your uh, motivation decreases, you need somebody to be by your side just to uh, uh, keep going and pushing you. As an example of this, uh, for instance, tomorrow, if you check the schedule, uh, Arde will be uh, giving a, um, a workshop. I think it will be in the workshop room number one in the other hall. Uh, from 10 to 12. The title is Make Your Own Robot, Quick Start Today with Pinguinos and Arduino. So it's um, uh, tar targeting basically people who have never uh, got in contact with robots before or with electronics, and you will see how easy it is. It's just, I mean, in two hours, we will run uh, several examples, and you will see things working. And then it's up to you if you decide to continue or not. So I invite everybody to pass by and take a look, even if you are not enrolled, because I think we, the, the course is fully booked by now. But just pass by and, and take a look. And of course, for uh, those of you who cannot uh, make it tomorrow, I will present you a really nice example. Uh, it's called from, uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's uh, Complubot. It's the name of an association uh, in the city of Complutun, which is the old name of Alcalá de Henares. It's a city of, in Spain where I grew up, and it's a, a, an association of uh, students. Okay, I'm not talking about the uh, students that go to the university or high school. It's just students from elementary school. So they got together a few years ago, uh, joined by their passion for robotics, and they dedicated time and effort to learn everything. They had the teacher, okay, but uh, most of the material, they got it online. And that, that is how they started. So slowly they start uh, improving and enhancing their robots and they start going to competitions. So this is a picture of them. And it's in uh, China, 2008. So they won uh, this edition of the RoboCup Soccer Junior. Uh, it's a competition that uh, basically uh, has, you, have, you are playing with two, uh, ga uh, two gamers, with two, um, sorry, two robots that are the players in the football field, in a mini football field. And the one who scores more against the other team is the one who wins. So these guys, they made it to the finals and they won. It's, it's even better. So the next year they did the same in Austria, in Singapore and in Turkey. Okay, so this is an example of uh, how it is it to, it is to, to, to start with robotics. You just need, just need to get the time and the passion for that. And if you need help, you should look for associations like us who try to, to help you. And after this example, I will let my colleague continue uh, with the overview of the Spanish uh, community. Okay, and to conclude, uh, probably after his explanation, you will see more are they as a confederation rather than uh, an association. Because uh, we are uh, trying to put together all the small communities that we have in Spain. 
This is a very basic and essential thing that you need to do. For instance, for this kind of events, the campus party takes place in London, so you need someone to coordinate all the local associations. Otherwise, there's, there is a lot of effort that is being wasted there. And that's all, so time for you, Jose. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pablo. Well, uh, now I'm going to make a brief introduction to the history of the robotic in Spain. You may think it's boring, but uh, I think it's interesting because you can see us now is the right moment to start making robotics because, well, at the start, well, uh, we, we meet at uh, the IRC, is some kind of chat. Very, but very simple, like a WhatsApp. And uh, the robotics in Spain started uh, with um, competition in Catalonia and Madrid. This was the first competition that they were important because the, they were meeting for people. So at the start, they were all in the universities. So they start meeting here in the competition, but they were very few because the, it wasn't easy to communicate between uh, between the the competitors. They were very local. They were very local focus. But with the beginning the, of the internet in Spain, the boom of the internet in we're the in the 2000, you can see as uh, the events and web page of robotics. Uh, explode. What is the problem uh, before that? Er, all the robots were made in the universities. So it wasn't easy for people outside the university to start making robots and electronics because all the knowledge was centered that. And after you exit the university, you didn't have contact with other people to meet and make, it, and make things. But this change and we have some very good people who make uh, his web, like Yonitron, who he posted his schematics. Almost all people in Spain in that uh, date uh, started learning robotics with this man. It's very, very smart. And uh, well, as you can see, everything started running. And uh, into 2005, we we start uh, as hey, we have missing campus bot. We start at campus bot uh, here and at campus party seven years ago uh, as a meeting. What was the problem? I'm sorry, the problem with robotics in Spain before that was that uh, it was it wasn't easy to to meet. But with uh, events like campus, everybody start meeting each other. Everybody start sharing his knowledge, and uh, started a competition of uh, robots. They were very, very funny. You can see here Galatea. It was made by one of our members, and you can see us. All robots were uh, handmade, all the PCBs, all the electronics were handmade. You can see Tar Robot, made from Ferry, he is the who conduct the workshop tomorrow, and uh, the humanoids and so on. Uh, so the competition starts. Sumo, Mini Sumo, Speed Runner, this motivates all the people to participate. but. Uh, Everybody was very technical. It was uh, still uh, very difficult to people, for not technical people to start it, to join in. So, yeah, yes, this is very short, short because uh, what we want is to, to ask you ask questions because you can start robotics uh, making, uh, watching slides while what is the best is to uh, to go to the workshops. Tomorrow we have a workshop, and what we want is what you want us to teach you. 
what is your principal inconvenient or what is your wall, as my colleague says, that uh, uh, stop you from uh, make robotics. So yeah, I just want to show you a, a video. It's very funny because, uh, as you can see, it's a very slow robot. But once you are in, uh, you really, really enjoy it. So, jueces también están preparados. This is like Formula One, F1. Comienza la carrera. Primera bifurcación. Segunda también. Espiral. No hay penalización. Sigue Murphy con paso firme. A la derecha, ahora gira a la izquierda, muy bien, ahí hay una trampa, vamos a ver si la salva. Llega el cuadrado, peligro. Giro perfecto. Murphy que de momento no tiene penalizaciones. Pero bueno, vamos a aplaudir porque llega a la zona comprometida. A ver qué pasa, a ver qué pasa. Gira a la izquierda, gira a la derecha. ¡Sigue! Giró a la izquierda. No hay penalización de momento. El tiempo corre, son 55 segundos. Espiral para Murphy. ¡Qué tensión ahí en ese cuadrado, por Dios! Gira a la derecha y a punto de llegar. Tampoco va a haber penalización por el exceso de tiempo. Y Murphy, que se hace con este desempate. Y recibe el aplauso. This video was seven years ago. Lots of things have changed. But what, one thing that has not changed is that once you are in, it's very, very funny. So tomorrow we have a workshop. We are going to make some really funny things. So please, uh, it's time for you to ask a questions about what do you think, uh, how to start robotics, what What do you want for us to to show you? So please, no questions. Oh, come on! Nobody wants to start making robots. You want to ma start making robots? Uh, why do you you don't start making one? Huh? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I just would uh, like to ask you, what do you recommend uh, for building a robot as uh, main brain of the robot? Uh, it's better uh, uh, my, uh, microcomputer like uh, Arduino or uh, something uh, higher, uh, higher level like uh, Raspberry Pi or something. What do you think it's better suit for uh, robotic programming? Oh. What kind of robot do you want to do? That's the first question. First, what is your background? What, what is your technical background? Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, what is your aim? Uh, uh, perhaps some kind of um, CNC machine or uh, another robotic. I'm not uh, decide yet. But uh, just asking uh, which direction should I uh, the, um, learn or if, uh, which direction the, the, I take? The easiest way to start uh, now, I think, is with Arduino. Uh, it doesn't have very high power, very high processing power, but it's full of documentation. You have documentation in all languages. Uh, there are lots of uh, active uh, communities working on it but uh, you, are, you aren't going to dominate the world with with arduino you can uh, so all the robots you have seen here arduino is more than enough to make one but if you want to make something more complicated like uh, artificial vision uh, artificial intelligence something with more computer power then you should go to, to a Raspberry. I think that now is the two main uh, ways to start. Before, uh, what we do was uh, asking the, 
the bare microcontroller and making all the electronics around. But now if you're going to start from the ground, go to a uh, Arduino and take uh, the shields, uh, the power shields. And if you are curious enough to understand why everything works, once you have started, you start disassembling all the things. But for starting, I think the best way is an Arduino. Uh, well, I wanted okay. I wanted to ask what is your what what uh, you recommend to me because I am st uh, studying engineering engineering in audiovisual systems and I have been doing things like the vision, the recognition of speeds, vision, and this stuff. But I would like to start in this world of robotics. But I don't have a lot of background programming and so on. And now I'm going to finish my degree the next year. And I don't know what is the next step. If I should do a master to program for my own, how can I do for, for getting inside this world? Well, so you want to make artificial vision, recognition of spe speech yes. recognition? Well, you can go to some there's already commercial software and open source software who can do that, but uh, they are very they they are mostly for uh, investigation. If what kind of, of thing do you for, tell me? Please give me one example. Well, I like uh, image uh, processing. I would like to to be in a team doing robots who are able to identify a person and do that kind of stuff. The problem is that I don't know what to do next year, because now I'm going to finish and I want to, to keep studying, and I don't know if I should do a master or start working, but I don't have experience, so it's like a big problem. So, well, let, me, excuse me, let me tell you my personal experience. For instance, I got a, a degree in computer system engineering and also a PhD in computer system, and I learned nothing about robotics in this, uh, during this period. So basically what I learned, I learned it on my own. Because I like it, so you dedicate your some time, you look for the resources and the right people, and that's the way. So there are very specific, for instance, master courses that you can take for that, but probably you will be paying, I don't know, like thousands of euros. And in the end, perhaps it's not what you want. So I encourage you to try at least for one month or during the summertime to get the, with, in touch with some people. You can download examples and test them. Basically, with a computer, you can do everything, some demos, some uh, basic programs, and see if you really like it. And then if you really like it, you can ask us, and we could, we'll give you the right uh, address. If, okay, if, if you prefer, you can yeah. join us later, and we can show you some samples and some web page to start looking at, oh. so you can decide, all right, I like it, uh, and I can do it on my own. OK, okay. thank you. Yeah. Hi, um, I was wondering, considering that we have no background because we're still in university, uh, is it possible, uh, what's the most complex robot we could do in a way for, I don't know, home domestic things or something? I don't know, because, you know, uh, each time I, 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 I hear the most complex robot, I always think in one robot who dominates the world. Well. <laughs> Because every, everybody who starts the robotics, uh, all people want to dominate the world. So, lower than that, I haven't arrived it yet. Well, because uh, what do you want? Cleaning the house or security robots? Uh, killing robots? Uh. <laughs> well, I was just wondering, um, as, a, as we saw in this video, that they can uh, have a recognition of a course of way or path um, if they could well if you can do it yourself a uh, robot that can clean up or maybe time things up so one works after the other so on yeah if you do you know Ro Roomba yeah well, yeah. they are uh, relatively easy to do to do yeah. the most complex thing is not the the programming or the uh, electronic thing but the, the vacuum, the, the thing who clean it, yeah, yeah. is the most complex thing to integrate. But all the other things are easily available, 
So maybe you can get uh, some commercial vacuum, put in some motors and sensors. They're, they are not complex at all. And make it on your own. So if you want, you can make a Roomba clone. So what would be the connection? What would be the best language to start programming with the Arduinos you said before? And then connect it to the sensors and all. Yeah. What, what would be the language to program it, the best one? Uh, C. C. I well, think C. There, is, there is no best one. Depends a lot on what you want to do. Uh, for the basics, I well. think they have a processing. It's a very simple uh, language. You all can also use the uh, graphical interface I'll show you before. And you can go down to the lower level with C or C++ to okay. run the same chip. I, so, I'm, yeah. I'm not fair. When I'm talking about C, I'm not fair. <laughs> Depends on your preference, because uh, the good part of uh, the DIY robotics is that you can get as simple or as, uh, as complicated as you want to get. So for instance, with the Roomba, you can uh, make your Roomba from scratch, from zero, and do everything by yourself. Uh, you can get the Roomba that you uh, put it there and it's working, and you can get the Roomba and modify it afterwards. So you reprogram the code inside, and it will do a different task or the same task more in a more efficient way. So depending on what you want to do, Maybe you need to learn nothing or you need to learn a lot. Because behind all these algorithms to, to route the robot, for instance, through your room, uh, there is a lot of mathematics behind, like finding the shortest path and these kind of things. So you can take a predefined algorithm from the web or you can make your own. Depends on what you want to do. But what, what they recommend is to start making something easy so you get it done very fast, so you get more motivation. I guess that uh, something more complicated. So please don't start with uh, computer vision. And so make one small thing, and then another small thing. And at the finish, at the end, you get a very big and beautiful thing. So I think it's the best. What, what would a small thing be? What would you start it? Like move, go back, forwards, and so uh, on? The align follower. The, the last video you have seen, mm -hmm. that's a very easy robot to, to do. Thank you very much. Any more? So that's all. Do we have some of the cards, for instance? Sure. Yeah, to do it. Ah, okay, after. Okay, so uh, I want to ask you a question. How many of you are going to be tomorrow at the workshop? Okay, we are making the workshop, but also all the materials will be available to anybody who wants to make something on, on its own. After the workshop, we are going to lend it so you can practice and uh, ask, ask us whatever you want. So please uh, come tomorrow to the workshop. We start very cool things, I, I think. Uh, I hope you, you start and continue in this robotic uh, thing. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, the next talk. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jose and Pablo. They'll be back at 8, giving you a talk on Pinguino and Eduana. Um, for now, they're finished. Um, next up on the main stage will be at 6 o'clock, the keynote speaker. So at 6 o'clock, make your way over there. Galileo will be shut until 8 o'clock. So thank you, and we'll see you later this evening. <laughs>